And welcome to Blackfeather Guild. Before we go in and say hi to the cast and get started with the show, I wanted to talk very briefly about viewer actions uh, and a little bit about sponsors. Uh, so first off, there's a number of ways that you can actually uh, actively participate in the show uh, through viewer actions. One of the easiest ways to do so is through retweeting the game tweet. Uh, you should see that somewhere in chat if it's not in there already. Uh, but you just click on that link and hit retweet. And for every five retweets uh, that we get on that, uh, it will add a bonus to the cast pool and the game master pool. Uh, now, in most cases, that's going to be an extra D6 that they can add on to any roll. Uh, basically, uh, a great way to use that is if a, a player is uh, almost meeting a DC, but they're just not quite there, they can grab one of those D6s from the cast pool, roll that, and then add that to their roll. Basically, is how that works. Same with the GM. Um, so that's one of the easiest ways that you can participate uh, that way. Another way is through Guild Coins. That's our Twitch channel points. If you look at the uh, rainbow-colored icon, it should have the uh, Black Feather Guild crest on it. Uh, it should be right below your Twitch chat box. Uh, if you click on that, it will show you all the different things that you can get with those, uh, the biggest one being plot points. Uh, now, plot points, uh, you can see an example right over here. Uh, they all work pretty much the same way. It's just a matter of how big of an impact they have. Uh, so for the example, and we've got two plot points, the player of your choice gets something moderately helpful or unhelpful. Enter any suggestions for the GM uh, into chat, or you can have the GM come up with something entirely on their own. Um, so just choose if you want it to be helpful or unhelpful to the party, um, and that's kind of how you can use them. You can throw in your own suggestions as well. Uh, how those work, one plot point is something you know, trivially helpful or unhelpful, two is moderately, three is very, and four is very to the entire party. Um, so if you want to do something to help the entire party or really throw a monkey wrench in their plans, um, four plot points will do that. Um, so that's guild coins. And then finally, we've got donations. So if you want to help out uh, with keeping the lights on in the place, so to speak, uh, there's a number of ways that you can financially contribute. One of those being uh, coffee.com slash raven or raven.rocks can see both of those examples down there at the bottom. Uh, those are the addresses to do direct donations. You can also do Twitch subscriptions or bits. Uh, those work the same way. And then finally, Patreon. We've got a Patreon, which you should see in chat here any second, if it's not there already. And uh, our bar tier patrons and higher get credits towards viewer actions every month that they can use on any show that they would like. Um, you just have to let us know in chat uh, how you want to spend those, and then we'll 
uh, hand those out. So some very cool stuff. Before we uh, hop over to see the cast, um, one last thing to mention is a couple things on this chart here. Uh, we've already covered the D6 and the plot points, but the triple crits, what that means is you can gift uh, auto critical successes. Uh, and you can, it's triple because you get three. You can divvy those out however you'd like. Uh, you can do two to the cast, one to the game master, all of them to the game master, however you want to do it. Um, so they work much like the D6s. Uh, the cast members just grab that when they're available and they really need them and use them. So it's pretty cool. And then finally, the last one, introduce an ally or enemy NPC. Just give us a brief description of what you want this character to look like, uh, kind of their, their character concept and a name, and let us know if you want it to be an enemy or an ally to the party, and the GM will basically take that and run with it. Um, so really cool ways that you can participate. Lastly, I uh, just want to take a quick moment to mention our sponsors. If you look at the logos down below, that's who's sponsoring this episode, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that uh, before we introduce everybody as well uh, on the next scene. Um, so yeah, check all this stuff out and, uh, and thank them for supporting us and thank you for being here and watching. Let's go say hi to the cast. I can find the button. Here we go. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, before we do introductions, I did want to take a quick moment to talk about um, the Twitch blackout uh, that is going on right now. So a lot of streamers are not specifically not streaming today uh, to demand that Twitch do better about um, things like racism and abuse on their platform, which I wholeheartedly support. However, there are st some streamers who, uh, like me, who do this as a living and could not afford to not stream tonight. Uh, however, I am asking that if you are uh, planning to donate or do anything like that, uh, to only do direct donations, don't do subscriptions or bits tonight uh, in support of that. Um, so if you're looking for how to do that, the direct donation links are in the uh, little chart. Uh, where are we at? Right down here, right there in that corner. Uh, Coffee.com slash raven, raven.rocks, the, the sites that passed me just talked about. Um, so that is the only sort of uh, heads up or update. Uh, and then I will get the game tweet links into chat and the Patreon as well. There you go. And yeah, Rowan, take it away. I shall take it and put it away. Ta da. No, I'm kidding. Uh, hi, I'm Rowan North. I'm a freelance illustrator and art educator, and I am the GM of this game which, as some of you may know, is the Tick Fall Files. It's a Monster of the Week game that takes place in the year 2040, following a uh, mysterious set of murderers uh, in Louisiana, uh, Springfield, Louisiana, near the Tick Fall River. Um, so we'll go around and introduce everyone and their characters and get into it. Uh, all right, so first off, let's uh, start with Jonas. Or Riley. Hi, I'm Riley. I play Jonas. Jonas is um, ex-military cinnamon roll. <laughs> he just has it bad for Mirabelle. So, and he'd fall on his sword for anyone. Um, I'm Riley, and I am a knit and crochet designer, and I'll put my website in chat. Hey, fabulous. Thank you very much, Riley. Uh, next is Yaz. 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 Hi, I'm Yaz. <laughs> I am a graphic illustrator and artist, and um, I play Savoy and Zakil, who is a changeling sharing the same body with a human. Um, and they are just always in confrontation with themselves and everybody around them. And yeah, that's, that's about it. I will also put my shop website in chat. So, yippee! <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Yasmin. Uh, next, uh, we will go to Vanessa. 
Hi, I'm Vanessa. I am the token Canadian of the group, which is something that I cannot say during uh, our Wednesday games. And I always uh, almost say that, but that's only for here. <laughs> uh, I'm primarily a watercolor artist. I also do pencil sketch. Um, and lately I've been getting back into digital pieces. And if you want to take a look at those, you can uh, find them on my art Twitter um, or my coffee account, my art Twitter uh, and my coffee. I'll pop in the, in the chat there. But I play uh, Mira and she's a red cap fairy, which is the fairy equivalent of a vampire. Uh, which means that she has to murder people for their blood to stay young and alive. So that's great. Um, and she's also the uh, the grump of the group, uh, which goes perfectly hand in hand with uh, with Jonas, who yeah, like like Riley said, is the cinnamon roll. So that's cute. Uh, we've got one plot point uh, purchased. So thank you, Michael, for that. Uh, doll thank you. Word to her. That donation of $3 for one plot point, and the suggestion is one of the players receives some sort of uh, flowers from a mysterious person. So whatever you want to do with that, Rowan. Hmm. Uh, the, the choice is up to you. Hmm. I can work this into some things that <laughs> plot points bought earlier. All right. Uh, okay. And then... Uh, Last but not least is you, Raven. Oh yeah, me. I'm you, playing this. it's a me. You. It's a me. <laughs> a Raven. Um, yeah, I'm Raven. I'm a tabletop streamer, and uh, I do literally everything involved with tabletop except for dice making, and that's only a yet at the end of that. Going to get into that. Um, Let's try. <laughs> I am determined. Once the season is over and I have more spare time, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start making dice. Anyways, uh, I play uh, Primrose, quote unquote, Dick Bellaru. Uh, she's a private investigator um, and was hired by Savoy to help with this sort of paranormal investigating of uh, all of the space stuff that's happening. Um, she just went through a mirror universe with like weird inception tile inception style stuff and rescued Naomi the uh, the FBI agent NPC um, in the area and uh, yeah she's kind of glad to not be stuck in a mirror anymore and thinking about asking Naomi on a second date <laughs> oh boy um all right, so we actually just finished up that whole mirror universe thing, like you said, uh, where basically uh, a mirror had, a, a hand mirror had possessed the mirrors of this uh, motel and causing weird, like, alternate dimensions to appear and things like that, um, doubles. Uh, however, you guys solved that. Uh, you ended up not killing uh kyle or uh, kyle's brother uh todd wright you guys decided not to kill him right is that right yeah. to just drag him off yeah we well i think it was kind of ambiguous actually uh mira had every intention of of um fucking him up for lack of a better term uh, but I think Jonas stopped her, didn't he? Yeah. Jonas stopped her and uh, got him medical attention. Yeah, so... Oh, that's right. They took him to the hospital. Yeah, he's alive. So Todd's alive. Did, um, you guys, did you guys take Savoy to the hospital after Savoy's protest of being like, no, I don't want to go back? I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> so the the snotty nurse can be like, "Oh, you're back again," and Savoy is just a grump. <laughs> uh, so, um, so uh, we are actually in an interim episode because when you met the. Uh, Temryu, the prince in the mirror, the piece of the prince in the mirror. Uh, 
uh, he basically said that this was would be a shortcut for you to get to his realm and to yeah. fi- to meet him face to face. Which uh, you guys are now prepping for, right? And you took the hand mirror. Can you describe to me like where you put the hand mirror? What's what's going on with that? Um, Anyone? <laughs> say, D- Dick no, has done nothing at this point. If nobody else steps up to take it, Savoy will have it gently wrapped up and put into one of the, the cards that they took so that they can store it at the house. Yeah, uh, Naomi, I think, took it in the moment, but I think she would offer it to you, Savoy. Uh, most because you seem to be the one who is in charge. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's still like the worst idea ever, but <laughs> that's what you are. You are the one who's in charge of all this weird shit. <laughs> right. You're right. So, well, Savoy will take it up. All right. Perfect. Um. Yes. Uh. So, you go to the hospital, Savoy. How bad off were you? Um, I think, let me double check because I still have it in my roll 20. Um, I think I was one or two past unstable. Okay, so you were pretty bad. I'm Oof. two points from dying. Oof. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been a good time for Savoy, guys. Boy, he's covered in scars. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, we'll actually start there at the at the hospital. Does I I assume people visit you? I mean, Tilda's probably like camping out there. Kidding. <laughs> the Built a blanket fort. <laughs> beg to beg Tilda to get them out of the hospital. <laughs> Um, but clearly that didn't work. They're stuck in the hospital. So I would assume that whoever wanted to visit would be able to visit. Okay. Um, I think Naomi will go and talk to you. Probably this is when she'll give you the mirror, actually. Cool. So uh is anyone go with Naomi? Um, I don't think Jonas would go with Naomi, but I do think that Jonas would um kind of coerce Mira into going and seeing her bird friend. <laughs> okay. Mira's not happy about um, it, but she will. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, I-, I think I might have missed something. Where was Naomi going? Uh, to the hospital to say hello to Savoy. Okay. Then, yeah, Dick will go with Naomi. What a time to take a drink. Okay. All right. So we've got Dick. Uh, does, so Mira goes. Till is camping out there. Dick's with Naomi. Uh, Jonas, are you going with Mira? Yes. At a different point. Like on a different day. Okay, different day. Okay. Uh, but this day it's particularly important. So uh, Naomi... Uh, just the hospital. I'd say you've been there about a day, right? You're out of critical condition. You've had the chance to rest. Uh, Naomi comes in uh, and, and says, "Oh, uh, I, y- you look better." Savoy just kind of gives her that look of like, "Well, I sure hope so." <laughs> <laughs> um. And despite, like, the grumpiness, like, the voice sort of shakes it off and, like, gives her a smile and tries to be amicable. <laughs> um, no, I absolutely deserved that saltiness. It's, it's, it's fine. Um, so, you know how I got that mirror, right? Yeah. So voice says. Um, Well, I was thinking, uh, you seem, I mean, I don't know if this ragtag group has any sort of 
official leader, but you seem to be the one officiating. Your house has become the headquarters. Uh, I Part of that is thanks to the help of Tilda and her charms, but uh, you you seem to know a lot more about what's going on with the whole magical creatures thing. You seem to be the one who's keeping the group together, more or less, or I guess assembling the Avengers. That's a very <laughs> dated reference. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Dick just like Chuckle. is leaning against the <laughs> Dick's like leaning against the wall behind Naomi and just kind of goes, <clears throat> nerd. Uh, um, I really like old movies, all right? That's, that's fine. And I do appreciate the sentiment that you think that I, I have any part in organizing this. Uh, but I try my best to at least have a place for people and to keep us together. So... Yeah, what, but why do you bring that up? I just, well, I was just more thinking about who should have the mirror. Uh, and considering, mo- isn't most of the other pieces of Temeru in your possession already? Aside from, well, Lily's book. But most then again, them, Lily yeah. lives with you now, so I. Well, I uh, suppose that all of Temeri's pieces are mostly under one roof. Mm. That is if... You don't think that there's any... How many more of these do you think there are? Um... I got the impression that if this isn't the last piece, there aren't many more after this. But that's just an impression. I could be wrong. Mm, maybe. Hard to say. I mean, I guess if he's invited us to his home, that's a uh, good sign. One <laughs> hopes. Uh, though I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't take any signs from Temeru as good. <laughs> Hmm. That's fair. But from what I'm understanding about fairies, and correct me if I'm wrong, they tend to be all shades of gray no matter what. That, as far as I can tell, that is correct. And like. Most of the ones I saw are like purples and greens and stuff. No, that's not. That. I. Oh. I, isn't it me and, who's supposed to be the literal one? There's a glint. Oh right, I'm sorry. Of, um, <laughs> like that carmine Don't take yellow. my joke. I have one joke. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Esmond. <Go> <laughs> okay. There's that glint of carmine yellow as the heel, like sort of, um, like chuckles also with everything of like, haha, you funny humans. <laughs> <laughs> you funny humans. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. <laughs> so we're humans. Tricks are for kids. Mm-hmm. Tricks How are for fairies. Vodka come out of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> just looking over at Riley as this dog butts in camera. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> um. All right. So, uh, she 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 continues like either way. Uh. Regardless, I think it's a good idea to keep them all in one place anyways, especially if there are others who are wanting to collect these pieces from what we've gathered in the past. Um, Right. I don't know. Uh, His minions or whatever collecting them. That's... uh, I'd be happy to take it. I do recommend, however, that either somebody get me my phone or let Barney know to remove the mirrors from the house. Um, just in the event that our friend gesturing to the mirror, uh, doesn't try it, the same trick again. Uh, I feel like the chance of that is very low. I mean, I've kind of had the mirror in my room and it showed my reflection as normal. So, uh, I mean, the mirror tried. The... You 
compact mirror did if you... he did try to talk to me through the compact mirror at one point I kind of ignored him should I have listened um oh it's fine if you believe that it's not going to be a problem we will simply keep a cautionary eye out for it ah uh, that's some pressure but all right <laughs> um so at that point she she's about to continue but she gets a phone call and she, uh she looks at it gets kind of a worried expression and she's like ah uh, i'll be th- ah this is important uh, duty calls as they say do Does anyone even what she needs say that? to do all right and she steps out of the room uh dick do you go to listen in or does anyone want to listen in or um yeah uh dick's gonna look at Sibley and go hey boss you look terrible but i'm glad you're getting better i'm gonna go eavesdrop on whatever it is she's talking about Savoy gives dick the most ironic finger guns that you could possibly imagine Like, finger guns and a smile that's just like, they might be on a lot of morphine at the moment. <laughs> Wee! <laughs> Wee! So Dick just kind of chuckles and gives a finger gun back and rolls her eyes <laughs> like a, like a, oh jeez. As she um, goes to the door and is trying to listen in on this conversation without, um, Naomi knowing that she's listening in on the conversation. So, Naomi, when Naomi opens the door, there are flowers there in the hall. Uh, and she pauses and looks down at him and it's like, how did uh, Dick, I think these are for you. That's bizarre. Why would they put them out of sight of Savoy's room? Anyways, um, I need to take this call. <laughs> yeah. Dick, um, like, stands way back away from the, the flowers and looks for a card. Is there a card on there? Uh, can you roll investigate a mystery or just sharp straight up and down? Uh, yeah, that's the, the same thing for me. That's a success. Fabulous. Okay. Uh, you you do uh find um with your detectoring skills you do find uh blonde hair that's kind of spectral looking okay just like you almost miss it but it seems to glow it's like towards the bottom so it's shadowy and that's the only way you're able to find like a hair that's glowing faintly Dick's gonna pull out like a an empty film uh little canister um like those if you remember 35 millimeter film uh containers uh that you pop the film into and close it before you take it to go get developed yeah and aside from that i mean there is a tag that says uh for uh dick bellaru and it's kind of a fancy script ish okay so yeah um taking the canister putting the hair in that closing it up um and any kind of like plastic bag or a napkin or anything like that she's going to grab the very corner of the card fold that up and stick that uh, in her best pocket as well. So as you do so, you do notice... To analyze later. Okay. Uh... As I do so what? Uh, as you do so, you do notice that there's kind of like a little like splatter, kind of a grease stain on it. As if it was okay. by a pan that splattered grease. <laughs> Bizarre. Uh, I think okay. I think Yaz has figured it out. <laughs> yeah, I sure have. I 
I figured this out a while ago, though. <laughs> it's just adding oh. to it. <laughs> yeah, I know who it is now. Yes, yes, yes. Because, let's face it, uh, our uh, viewers are the ones who have made this character what they are now. So... Frickin' Joffrey. Joffrey! Um, <laughs> okay. The so, spectral yeah, um, chef that's stalking you, Dick. <laughs> I'm obsessed about you. So Dick's gonna take the flowers and then uh, go back into the room with Spoy and go, oh yeah, by the way, uh, have some flowers. And just set them on the bed and walk out. <laughs> They're for you, and Soy. Go to try to, uh, listen to, Sorry, say uh, that one more time. Naomi's conversation. Uh, Dick just comes back in with these flowers, sets them on the bed, uh, and goes, these are for you, boss. All right, I'm gonna go eavesdrop on Naomi now. <laughs> Savoy just, like, gives you, like, a deadpan stare and lets you go. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> Dick just sort of, like, shrugs, like, I don't know, just, uh, have some flowers. And, <laughs> um, she's gonna go try to listen in on Naomi's conversation. Um, okay, so... Uh, can, uh, hmm. Let's actually have you roll another sharp. Let's do kind of investigate mystery, see how much you hear. Mm okay. Um, uh, it's a seven. I'm going to add a d6. Okay. So it's a nine. Okay, so make success. So, uh, as you are eavesdropping, uh, she's definitely... <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, okay. uh, we just got a Buster Rhyme from me. Oh, Yasmin. no. Yasmin. <laughs> so, next time it's Savoy's turn to talk. We'll start the timer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anyways. <clears throat> so uh, as you're listening in, uh, it's clear that she's, tr it, from what you gather from the conversation, like she's not dropping a lot of details. This is obviously one from one of her superiors. Uh, so that means that it needs to be more private and top secret. Um, and yeah, she is definitely trying to stand away and gets quiet when anyone, like one of the nurses, pass. So you're having you're having difficulty picking up what exactly it is um, that she is uh, saying, but you absolutely know that this is work related, and she sounds a little shaken. Okay. Um. You, you hear mostly a lot of like, okay, yes, sorry, I'll look into that. All right. And, uh, that's, that's that. Uh, <laughs> if you move away from the door once she hangs up. Uh, no, um, Dick is just going to move into wherever Naomi was. Uh, or is standing. Okay. Go, oh, hey. Um, she. Everything alright? She visibly starts. She is just barely like hung up and is kind of looking at her phone. Um. And she's just like, ah, ah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, everything alright? Um. Yes. I guess. No. Maybe. The, it's just work. The way you're saying yes over and over sounds like it's a no. It's... <sighs> I mean, the cases for the murders, the serial murders in the town over have gone cold. And I wonder why that is. However... Whoops. <laughs> however, there seems... There has been someone who reported being attacked 
and bitten them by the neck right here in this hospital. Wasn't me. That's weird. Oh, yes, it was. It's Todd um, who reported. <laughs> oh, it still wasn't me. <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, I think I can take care of that. Um, could you take care of something for me by chance? Uh, um, uh, sure. What? Uh, Dick pulls out the card and the little canister with the hair and goes, um, somebody's been following me lately and sending me weird stuff. Can you, um, find out who, or just, you know, send it to the lab or whatever? And, um, man, like, whatever the, the FBI, uh, restraining order is, let's, let's just... <laughs> if you can help with that <laughs> oh i see so you want me to put a restraining order on whoever's been following you uh i can do that that'd be great i can certainly do that um i mean that seems better than me having to beat them up and tell them to stop but uh, honestly this is a conversation we should have with savoy if she's in any state to listen <laughs> snort <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, after you. I totally forgot about the Busta Rhyme part. <laughs> this is just <laughs> naturally the order of things. <laughs> um, the Busta Rhyme. <laughs> the... All right. So, uh, Dick's following Naomi. Okay, so Naomi heads back into the room and quietly closes the door and says, So, listen. Uh, I just got a call from my superiors, and it seems the weird happenings here in Springfield are finally catching up with the rest of the FBI. Luckily, they think I'm just completely inept at my job, so I'm being given the benefit of the doubt, I guess. But uh, between what happened, like, the confusion from the alligator man, what was his name, Steve? Uh, you know, the crushed vehicle. Kyle? No, the all alligator, the one in the... Oh, motel. yeah, Steve. That, that was Steve. Between Todd, was that his name? Whoever it was, calling. Ah, yes, it was Todd. I'm remembering now. Um, between Todd, Todd's wounds, and the the store, the gift shop being destroyed, and break-ins, and. <sighs> You have done so much to keep things quiet and paying people off, but there's only so much of that, I guess, you can do until someone is bound to notice. <laughs> oh, no. I'm trying to think of what comes next. Three minutes. Um, Savoy laughs like that. The uh, dopey, drugged up laugh until they're laughing, they're off their ass. Uh, <laughs> 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 and feathers prickle their cheek and their head tilts a bit weak. And the heel's voice comes out, almost in a pout, and says, well, as a human, there's only so much you can do. Uh, until other humans begin to stew on the acts of violence and magic. Um, and, uh, you can only cover your tracks with so many adjectives. <laughs> you try. You try. <laughs> you tried. 
<laughs> tried real hard. This is a real art. <laughs> You're doing pretty good oh until adjectives. <laughs> their chin a bit and wait a tit before responding again and says well if they can't be bought then an Hey, now it's back. There we go. We're getting the internet fixed tomorrow. Okay. Thank God. <laughs> uh, and we're back on stream. Hello, everybody. Sorry, our internet went out. We're waiting on Rowan to get back in. <laughs> um, internet, internet's getting fixed tomorrow. Big oof. Do I still have to ride? Yep. Is my time up? <laughs> no, your time is up. Okay. <laughs> A for <laughs> effort. <laughs> I'm trying so hard. There's only so many flat rhymes that you can have. <laughs> the thought of having to rhyme for five minutes sends me into an anxiety spiral. So you got further than I would have. <laughs> <laughs> I, if it helps, I will totally take your rhyming time if if it if it helps um keep you from from anxiety no, there we go yes ma'am <laughs> i got your back thank you uh so what dick was saying before the internet cut out um so dick has contacts in both organized crime and espionage uh -oh. um through through the naked city uh uh, move in, <gasps> in their playbook. Oh! So, I think Dick's gonna try and be like, um, I've got a buddy over at the CIA I think can, uh, take care of this. They usually have me help them with their, um, uh, supernatural things that the government doesn't need to know are supernatural. Um, oh. yeah. I've got a friend over there, I think he can probably clean that up. I mean, I know, so Savoy's rhyming spell is now over, and they kind of just blink dumbly and nod, and they're like, well, uh, I would rather take your contacts over trying to contact my family. Oh. Uh, ah, uh, yes, that's preferable. I've, I mean, no, no offense to you, I've heard things. There's extensive files on you and your family. <laughs> and Savoy just kind um, of stops and tilts their head at Naomi and is like, I'd be curious to know about my family. <laughs> it's top secret. I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> and Savoy is just like, oh, why? Why would you take this away from me? Like, everything that they do is over-exaggerated and almost silly. Like, like hand against oh forehead, gosh. throws their head back, and is like, you have done me a disservice! So, how, Dick just how looks are at those drugs? Savoy goes, <laughs> Sir? Yeah, Dick just looks at Savoy and is like, morphine's a hell of a drug. Yeah, morphine is 
great. <laughs> I should do morphine more <laughs> often. Um. So, Dick grabs her phone, dials in a number, and is uh, calling up their buddy. Uh, so for mechanics-wise, uh, The Naked City reads, You have lots of personal contacts wherever you go. Pick four contact types. Uh, Dick has bartenders, organized crime, espionage, and national police. Ooh. Um, you can hit them up for info, which is plus one to investigate a mystery role, or small favors. There may be a small cost involved. Personal contacts can provide more significant help, but the keeper decides their price on a case-by-case -case basis. All right. Uh, give me a name for your CIA uh, uh, guy. Special Agent in Charge Jenkins. We already have a Jenkins. Wait. We do? Yeah. Miss Jenkins is the, this game? Jenkins the, the other butler. Yeah. Isn't Jenkins also Tilda's last name? Oh, yeah, no, it you're is, right. actually. It's a you're Jeeves right. and it's Jeeves and uh That's Barney. right. Barney, that's right. I usually Barney. Jenkins is like my go-to NPC name. Um Hey, let's, let's uh, do special agent, agent in charge Smith. Let's do agents. <laughs> no. That's that's no. <laughs> Uh, special agent in charge, Timison. Tennyson? Timison. Timison. Type that in chat, please, because dear God. <laughs> Timison. All right. So, all right. Uh, in the meanwhile, Naomi says, hey, uh, as you're doing this, I mean, this is important enough that I think Mira and Jonas should be in on what's going on. I can, I can call them. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Dick's on the phone. It's like, yeah, I need to speak to a special agent in charge, Timison. So the, yeah, this is Dick. Uh, so they, they probably have you, you know, confirm a few things, security questions. I don't know. But you finally get to um, Timison's office. <laughs> what was Shut your up! mother's name? <laughs> <laughs> what yes. year did you graduate high school? What was your first pet's name? <laughs> yeah. What's your mother's maiden name? That that was the first one she said. I just said that. Oh. <laughs> but it's a it. good one. That's a good one. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> All nice. right. So um Timison gets on the phone, it's like, Dick, it's been a bit. How's it going? Oh, you know, uh, I'm still alive, despite Everything's best efforts. Oh, shit. Yeah. I know. It's been a hot second. I thought you finally bit it. Where I was caught up with you or something. Right, too soon? Sorry. No. <laughs> no, it's fine. Speaking of werewolves, how's that one that you all uh, captured up in Jacksonville? Eesh. Uh, yeah, not talking much. I uh, figures. Uh, we're, we're having well, all hey. sorts of issues there, but... Uh, we're on the trail of of others. Uh, good news is, we've got some guy named James that we've been following, all the way to Mississippi, even. Ma'am, I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> um, so it goes, all right. Well, um, hey, I, I need a little bit of a favor. I'm um, doing a bit of an odd case here in um, where are we at? Springfield. Yeah. What's the name of it? Springfield. I keep, I keep wanting to call it the town tick fault. I'm like, no, the that's the park. <laughs> uh, we're, uh, I'm doing a, a weird case here in Springfield where there's a bunch of weird supernatural stuff going on. To um, be honest, Dick, the... let, me, let me hold you there for one second. To be honest, weird shit is all over the board. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but shit is really popping up let's, around the world. Let's just say that. I know a lot that I can't talk about, and you know a lot that you can't talk about, and it's probably some of the same stuff that we both can't talk eh, about. Quite likely. Uh, either way, just know that this is that this does not surprise me, and also, uh, yeah. Well, does anything surprise us these days? Eh, get one or two. Uh, you know, had 
had one of the the people in the office have a case of the of the of the head fairies. Didn't even know that that was a thing. Uh, oh yeah, that's a nasty one. Yeah, pixies roosting in your hair. It was awful. Hair was in knots. Yep. Oddly enough, same treatment as crabs. Oh really? I have to use that. Shave shave the head. It, it, it clears it right up. Anyways, I've, I've got a city here causing some trouble with an investigation that I'm doing, and um, they're getting the locals involved, and it's going to get a little messy. You know how that goes. Could you um, possibly make them not uh, be here for a couple weeks? Uh, we're talking about the feds, or...? Uh, no, I'm actually working with the FBI on this one. I just need... Um, I need... Um, well, the, I'm working with local FBI. This guy's complaining to more than just that. So I just need him to shut up for a couple of weeks ah. and then come back in a couple of weeks going like, oh, yeah, no, I'm fine. That was just, uh, you know, uh, mushrooms are a hell of a drug. Give me give me, give me, me a name, hon, and I can, I can cover you. Um, Todd, last name? Todd! <laughs> Whatever his last name is. <laughs> Kyle, do you right? You know we have a note section in Roll Twenty that you never look at. <laughs> no, because I did not remember that we have a note section. <laughs> uh, uh, oh well. Right. He's not in. He's not in the note well, section. Well, that's because you guys were supposed to be the ones using it. Sure information. If he's, if he's Kyle's brother, his last name is Wright. Yes. No, wrong. No, I'm kidding. Right. You're right. Okay. Wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kyle. Kyle Wright. Um, or, I think he's still at the hospital. Todd. Todd Wright. Raymond. You know what? Take care Todd of Kyle Wright. too. Just take them all. Actually, <laughs> Kyle has done nothing wrong. <laughs> Kyle. Can uh, he did pee in Savoy's jeep. That's the only thing. That's, but do you blame him? There was a, a giant that tried to step on him. Okay. No, <laughs> that's fine. So, uh, it's like, Todd, Todd, hmm, hmm, maybe have him arrested for, uh, fraud, money laundering. Seems like there's some of that going on. Oh, I mean, you don't have to arrest him, just, you know, uh, put him up in a safe house for a week or so. Tell him he's won a vacation. I don't care. Just... Well, I, I, I'm looking at, being... I'm looking at, like, things that we can easily peg him for anyways, and we've hey, had an eye on him. what you do on a Thursday night is none of my business. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, you, you know what I do on a Thursday night. <clears throat> anyway. Unfortunately. <laughs> Drink alone. In my room. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, hey, I told you you're not my type. I'm sorry. It does. A man, man can dream sometimes, but I get it. Uh, Anyways, personal talk. Um, personal talk should should wait later. But I would like to catch up sometime. Yeah. Um. Tell you what, you do me this this favor here. As soon as this this investigation's over, uh, we'll meet up at the beach and drinks are on me. Sure thing, hon. Uh, eesh. Although there's a lot of cases that I have to travel abroad for. Uh, I'll have to put a rain check on that, see what I can do. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Timson. You're a peach. All right. No problem. Consider it taken care of. Um, yep. And then Dick just hangs up. They're terrible at actually, like, saying bye on the phone. They just... <laughs> uh meanwhile all right boss it's taken care of uh so meanwhile naomi has dialed up mira and jonas saying hey listen something kind of important that you have to you know be in charge like understand and she she uh explains the situation that you know they are catching attention and then dick just shouts take care of we're good <laughs> and damn he's like oh are you certain 
Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, my buddy over at the CIA is going to take care of it. You have a buddy in the... Uh, of course you do. <laughs> Dick just gives Naomi, like, the biggest shit at eating grin. <laughs> uh, well, regardless, Jonas, Mira... Uh, it's something to keep in mind that people are getting more wary. So, Mira, Mira, can you keep the biting people on the down low, at least? Mira just makes some vague grumbling noise. Like, you know, girls gotta fucking eat. Like, <laughs> Well, you're being given blood, 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 blood. Bags. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's about as fun for Mira as feeding a tiger uh, some raw meat that you got at the grocery store in a cage. You know what I mean? Like she likes going out and murdering people. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> Jonas. Like so, Naomi can just like faintly hear Jonas like in the background. Like it's okay, Mira. You can bite me. Oh fuck. There- Sound of like oh. a hand covering the receiver, like Mira's trying. <laughs> she's trying to block out Naomi for a second, and she, she just yells. Well, this she doesn't yell. But she, she you can hear her in the background. She goes, "Jonas, we've had this discussion. Knock it off." <laughs> I assume they're not on speaker. They phone. are on speaker. They oh are on God. speaker. Okay. You can hear Savoy that case... laughing their ass off in the background. <laughs> Dick just yells out, yeah, she can. There's a little bit more grumbling and then Mira cuts off the phone. She just hangs up. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, Uh, fantastic. So apparently I didn't need to call them both. In a conference call because they were already in the same room. I, how I think did did I know this that they were a thing or was it just oblivious? I I thought Jonas just flirted with everyone. Savoy like points and just laughs. <laughs> um, <laughs> just like that dopey dumbass, like. <laughs> I honestly thought he just flir- flirted with that just... Okay. <laughs> Dick kind of leans over Naomi and goes, speaking of flirting. Uh, uh... Just gives her a wink. Uh, what... What What was that for? Question, question mark? Did it just say question mark out loud? <laughs> Yes, you did, darling. That was adorable. Uh, I mean, is there... Okay. (laughs) Dick's just sitting there just grinning because it's exactly what she's trying to do is just push buttons. Uh, All right. Well, Savoy, I suppose we should leave you to rest, but that's important. I'm certain that Dick's friend can take care of things, but all the same. Savoy reaches out and is like, wait, and like Mm -hmm. beckons with their hand for Naomi to get closer. Uh, Yes, and she does. She steps closer. Nervously, like, oh. (laughs) Well, how close, how close do you want her? Savoy beckon her closer and closer. And come here, and come here, and come here with their hands. Until she's like, uh-huh. like all right, so close. she she comes to the edge of the bed, like side of the bed, just where Savoy is like laying or sitting, laying in the bed. Yes, and Savoy's gonna reach out and grab both of her cheeks and be like, "When I'm sober, I'm asking you about my family again," and lets her go. <laughs> and giggles uh... about it. <laughs> Uh, uh. Okay, I will keep that in mind. Uh. 
she kind of rubs her cheeks like what the hell just happened and <laughs> uh, and leaves good <laughs> now jonas and amira we will get to you and what's going on over there uh, and then talk about general like how you guys are prepping for your excursion to the other world but we'll do that after the break Oh, awesome. Well, we'll be back in about 10 minutes, so hydrate, stretch your legs, um, whatever you need to do, grab snacks, and we'll be back in 10 minutes. See you then.
There we go. Welcome back. All right. So Jonas and Mira, speaking of, uh, are you the, at the manor, like hanging with Lily? Are you at the house um, at Mira's house, just chilling? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm to share with you what Riley sent to me because it's too good not to. <laughs> oh no. During the break, she just sent me a message and was just like, So, you know, like, what are Jonas and Mira doing? Was he giving her an impromptu lap dance? And that's when I. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point where I had to mute myself because I literally choked on the air. <laughs> um, oh my god. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't think Mira would have that reaction that a human would, but <laughs> whatever floats your boat, Jonas, darling, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say, you know, with Lily would be fine, but I don't want that kind of energy in front of Lily. Jonas <laughs> would have just been horsing around, fully clothed. <laughs> the reaction out of Mira. <laughs> not gonna get the same reaction out of Mira that you would out of a human so makes it fun it won't stop him from trying let's be real here this is Jonas <laughs> you are absolutely right he would still try <laughs> just see what happens Fair enough. um I don't know Jonas what are we doing I think we should just go back Ma'am, just <laughs> go with them where, hanging. Where, or where is Ma'am hanging out with Lily? No. Okay. Lily, Lily's with Barney. Lily's with Barney. Okay, so that you're having couple time. <laughs> it's even worse. And then, then Jonas, <laughs> Jonas just flips on some music, and you know everybody outside just hears. <laughs> 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 No, it, it's uh, it, it's <laughs> it's like a brown, like a brown. <laughs> wow! <laughs> All they hear from Mira is just like, what kind of garbage human music is this? <laughs> just careless. Also, I kind of imagine Chotis bringing out bringing out the oldies and and playing like Backstreet Boys or something. Oh yeah. my god. Tell me why. Jonas already has my heart. Why are we why are we working on something that's already his? <laughs> I Ain't still nothing have all but a heartache. Oh gosh. Uh, that's great. Probably we're just hanging out. Maybe something like that. Like Jonas goofed off at like towards the beginning of the day. And it was just had said Naomi called. And Jonas is still shirtless with his cowboy hat on. What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just like chilling on the couch, just like, what is it? <laughs> god. 
Amazing. Uh, so when you say horsing around, <laughs> in literal. No. <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. No more puns from you, Missy. <laughs> That's like asking a, uh, a a dog to stop licking its butt. Um, <laughs> I don't know why that. <laughs> I don't know why that. You a dog licking its ass. I don't Guys. know why that's the one that my brain went to. Anyways, let's get back to my story. My compelling fucking story. <laughs> Please, vodka. My nose is awful. Vodka. <laughs> 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 oh, no, so no. All right. So, uh, all right. So, yeah, I would say that it's towards the evening. Um, and you guys are still hanging out at Mara's house. Probably, Jonas, you're thinking about heading back. Mary, you're thinking about going, you're worrying about Lily a little. Uh, so, um, and that's when there is a strange knock at the door. It sounds like a small hand, a little bit lower than you would expect. A uh, person standing at full height. Whose door is this? Mira's door. Oh. She goes to get it. Uh, and there is a goblin, but it's not one of the four that you, you know. Um, it's a, it's a different goblin. Mira tries uh, to keep her residual disgust at the goblins who, uh, jumped her at the beginning of the, uh, of the beginning of the campaign to a minimum, uh, because obviously this is a different goblin, so she's not yeah, going it to was, burn that it was right away. Gimli that jumped you, and Gimli mm -hmm. is with the other group that lives on Savoy's property now. So, <laughs> uh, but no, this one is dressed. Sorry, what were you saying? Oh, I was just gonna say, Mira opens the door and is like looking straight ahead as if to uh, look into a tall person's eyes, and then she stays there for a painful five seconds and then looks down. <laughs> uh. So this one is dressed in royal, like the, like a royal purple, uh, with gold trim, which is very unusual to see a goblin dressed so finely. Um, you, they have like long, uh, red hair and curly sheep horns, and, uh, just kind of. And is holding a kind of like basket. It's unusual. It it's more like a small carriage if you didn't know better. Which I mean, it could be, but either way, they look at you at, in confusion as you and, and just go um as you uh, look over them um um. So that's when Mira, like, drops her gaze. Uh, me is royal messenger sent from the, the house of Vulpis. Vulpis. Jonas at this point would be like, who is it? And bound over. And he, just, like, looks down and he sees the thing in its hands and he's like, is that a TARDIS? Well, oh, what? What? Like, uh, Lana stole the king's TARDIS and made her own TARDIS. Oh, wait. That's, like, future for you. Um. <laughs> does that take you places? Oh, Lana. It, I mean, it takes someone places, but we, uh, you know, the I messenger for the House of Vulpis is, uh, we carry them and sometimes wear them as backpacks on our back to take the Fae from House Vulpis, Vulpis to the places they must go. Uh, I guess, in a way, that makes us pack mules. That's what they call them, right? 
Mira just makes like a little snorting sound. <laughs> Comment on it. A beast of burden. Anyways. I is real messenger from from House Wolfis Wolfis from the house of Temru uh to give you message well to give you the person who is going to give you message who is in this <laughs> the carriage that I carry <laughs> what is you guys' reaction as to going off like this <laughs> Mira like oh. low voice and whispers to Jonas and she's like that took an awful long time to get out that little message <laughs> Jokes nods, but like also feels really bad for the goblin. <laughs> of course, that doesn't feel bad for the goblin. So at this point, the goblin bow bows in one knee and holds up this this like kind of wicker basket carriage, and you notice that there's a uh, tiger lilies that are kind of woven in, in between them. It's a it's a decent size. It's about, you know, yay big. It's, you know, like carrying a fruit bowl. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, out, a little wicker door opens, and out steps a tiny fox person. It's a uh, red fox, but with moth wings. And uh, wearing a purple and brass robe. It's not Miss Nora, so I don't care. <laughs> what? I said it's not Miss Nora, so I don't care. <laughs> no. Why would um, it be Miss Nora? That's another world, you fool. I know, but that's my point. It's not Miss Nora, so why would I care about the tiny fox? It's a tiny fox <laughs> with moth wings. <laughs> Miss Nora or bust for Mira. What? Uh, I, I, I said for Mira, or I guess Vanessa actually would be more accurate. It's it's Miss Nora or bust. Yeah, yeah literally. <laughs> Seriously. So, I mean, no, what Nora. you have to do, donate $25 and Miss Nora will suddenly be in this campaign. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it Was Miss Nora even that old? I don't <laughs> she wasn't. But we already have multiple dimensions. We have time travel. Anything's possible. True. I swear to God, if I donate $25, it's going to happen. Miss Nora, <laughs> or are you going to want, like, Galder in here to, you know, oh. give everyone boners? Um, <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> okay, anyway. Um... Yes, so Mira does not make any rude comments about the little fox. She just waits patiently. So uh, it also has like little antenna, like a uh, moth antenna and like a little flower crown. It's, oh. And it, it, it has its uh, arms in its sleeves and it bows very politely and says, I am Kit. Kit from House Volpes Volpes, and I am here with an, with an invitation. We first stopped at the at the the the, the ruler's house. Your your ruler, the one that lives in this town. I I would not want to assume that a human rules over a fairy like yourself, uh, Miss, but. No one seems to be home, Mira's except for a strange, strange, wrinkly man. <laughs> <laughs> he smells like no flower I have ever smelt before. He called it a cologne. I have never heard of such a flower. <laughs> Mira just looks at Jonas and she's like, "Did he mean Bernie?" <laughs> <laughs> Um, yes. 
anyways, he, 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 he was spooky. How, how do humans allow themselves to get that wrinkly? <laughs> Mira doesn't say anything to that. <laughs> She's kind of weirded out by it too, not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> fairies. Fairies are all ageists, apparently, so. Um, it's like... You're not wrong. Uh, irregardless... I am here with an invitation, and it uh, reaches into the carriage and pulls out a paper, and it has, like, this uh, calligraphy that's with, like, this shiny color-shifting ink. Um, like, chameleon chrome, like, my eyelids today, you know, that just shifts when the light hits it. Love and that. it uh, says, invitation on the invitation on the envelope a little on the nose but okay how big is this compared to the tiny fox fairy <laughs> it's um it's a normal envelope so it's this fox if the carriage is this size the fox would stand about this high so it's like holding it like this oh. like one would like a poster board sign oh um, so Mira reaches for it and uh kind of gives a little nod as she takes it and you you may tip the messenger. Um Mira hands the invitation to Jonas and she disappears inside. I like blackberries. Blueberries uh, are fine too. Unfortunately, Mira oh does God. not have any uh, <laughs> not have any berries in her fridge at the moment. <laughs> it's mostly just a few last bags of blood, so sorry about that. But she does <laughs> have um, she does have a couple of plants in her house now. There's not very many, uh, but when the gang was all there last time, there were no plants. Um, so now she has a couple planters that are hanging from the ceiling from, like, little hooks. Yay. And one of them is, like, the, um, are they called bleeding hearts? Is that what they are? Yes. The little pink ones yeah, that look like the drippy hearts. Yes, bleeding hearts. Yeah, I, I love those. I My aunt used to have buckets of them outside her house when I was growing up. <laughs> buckets. <laughs> Yeah, there's big planters of them. Um, so Mira snaps off a few sprigs of the little bleeding hearts. Um, and she, like, ties them together. And she grabs a little piece of twine from her cupboard and, like, ties them together and all that cute stuff. And then she brings that out. So it lets out a happy little yip. Like, no! Oh. That's this, so cute. This will suffice. Suffice. This will suffice. And Mira gives a little a little smile, uh, and she hands it to the fairy very gently, and it's very polite. So it like wraps its little arms around it, and it's like, this can decorate my carriage. I look forward to it. Thank you very much. And he hands it to, because he doesn't want it to get smushed in his carriage to the goblin and says, you must carry this very, very, very much carefully. And the goblin says, okay. <laughs> Jonas, um, the note you must open with all present. It will self-destruct. That's the word for it, isn't it? Gonna say your mission should you choose to accept it. <laughs> the sausage will self destruct. That's what humans say, isn't it? Mira just eyes the tiny fairy and she's like, It'll self destruct if we don't all open it together? No, no uh, after it is read. Ah, yes, that is what the humans say. Because it's private secret. Of course. <laughs> Mira looks to Jonas. Jonas, were you going to say something? 
Yeah, so Jonas um, is going to look at the goblin and just reach out from his pocket, grab the car keys and take a keychain off and like hand it to the goblin and be like, and a gift for the messenger's carrier. Oh, goody. And the goblin is about to like drop the whole basket to grab it. But then Yip just kind of like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's like, oh, sorry. Uh, you can put it in my mouth. Or no, hang it on my, my, my horn. Hang it on my horn. So Jonas will do that. Freaking goblins. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, now the goblin happily with the keychain on the, uh, on its horn now says, uh, thank you very much, Lee. That is the message that we must, ha must bring and has bring, brought, bringed, brought, bringed. Yes. So. <laughs> Mira just rolls her eyes. Um. <laughs> But she just says thank you and kind of like shoes Jonas in the inside. <laughs> All right. So that is that. Um, all right. So do you uh Savoy's so probably gonna be in the hospital for at least another day or so. Uh do you just gather everyone at the hospital? Probably just as well, yeah. Okay. Um, so everyone crowds in this room. Uh, Faith is there on behalf of the Moonstone clan. Since uh, on, the room is only so big and they get mad. So, <laughs> so everyone's kind of crowded in. It's Naomi, Faith, and the rest of you. Um, and uh do you, do you introduce what happened like how, how do you introduce this oddly mysterious color shifty letter uh <laughs> just the way it happened so mira <laughs> mira's just like yeah like you know um a goblin brought a fairy to the house and presented us with this invitation. Naomi's like, ah, so what you're saying is a fairy brought a fairy that brought a note. That doesn't seem very practical. Well, there's different kind of fairies. Either. Uh, I mean, I would hope that there are different kinds of fairies and not all are made equal. I don't think this world will do well with many mirrors all in one place. You know what? This is Faith talking, right? No, this is Naomi. Oh, okay. I don't like to argue with you, but you better take that back. The world uh, is lucky to have a bunch of mirrors. <laughs> need I remind you that uh, Mira does has killed people and needs to drink blood? That would be very bad for us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not listening. Nobody's hearing nothing. <laughs> Mira ignores that comment and she looks at Naomi and she's like, um, you know, don't humans ride other living creatures to get to different places, if I'm not mistaken? Uh, uh, horses to get around, did they not? Well, at some point, yes. I think so they're still horseback police officers. Just chime in at this point, too, and goes... Well, I imagine, um, you know, eating hamburgers sounds pretty good until you're the cow. So, it's all about perspective. Uh, you, 
Dick, you're not a vegetarian, are you? Me? Oh no, I'm just saying. When you find right. yourself in the position of the cow, the situation isn't that great. But we're, we're still eating hamburgers. Are you saying they eat goblins? <laughs> I'm saying if we're going to sit here and be cool with eating hamburgers, we should probably be okay with something other than us trying to eat us every so often. The uh. boy just laughs. <laughs> Meanwhile, Faith is like, if... so what you're saying is, those cannibals got it right. No. <laughs> That's disgusting. Dick woods up here and goes, sure. she's not a human. Mira shoots an appreciative glance at, <laughs> in Dick's direction. <laughs> All right. Well, looks fairly humanish. Savoy just laughs again. <laughs> Mira, right. Mira goes over to um, Savoy's bedside and <laughs> reaches over and uses her uh, index finger and her thumb to widen one of Savoy's eyes <laughs> and just like leans in and looks in it and she's like Savoy do they have you severely doped up like what is going on here Savoy laughs yes. even harder <laughs> And, like, you get the flash of Carmine that is the heel and just, like, cackles. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. Right. Yes, Savoy is very doped up. <laughs> Mira just lets go of Savoy's eyelids um, when the heel <laughs> shashes through. Uh, and she, she also kind of joins in on the laughing. Um, and she's like, hmm, well, I wondered what the bird brain might have thought of that. <laughs> it's a good time. It's a really good time. <laughs> it's party upstairs. It's a party upstairs. Dick, uh, Dick suddenly has like, it, you know, if this were a cartoon, a light bulb would appear above her head. And they look over at, uh, at Mary and go, hmm, I got an idea. So speaking of eating and no, Naomi's obviously not okay with you uh, uh, eating indiscriminately around these parts, but um, thanks I for making me the people that have it coming. Oh, I don't know how I feel about that idea either. Dick just leads over and puts her hands on either side of Naomi's head, just covers up her ears. <laughs> it's like it's a good Dick and yeah, Mira so... are on the same wavelength because Mira was literally. <laughs> about to like hold her hand up in Naomi's direction and she go, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Dick goes, that you both, do, you you both do it. So uh... someone's covering Naomi's ears, the other person's like, <laughs> yeah, the adults are talking. <laughs> Faith is here How looking at me uh... like, I'm glad that I'm apparently older mentally than she is. So. <laughs> Yes. So anyway, Dick Mira looks, looks at Dick and goes, "How do you feel? How do you feel about uh, taking out some domestic abusers?" Mira just grins and she's like, "Hmm, delicious." <laughs> We're gonna get along great. Uh, so Dick takes her hands off of Naomi's ears and goes, "And that's how you make my secret recipe for buttermilk biscuits." I. Just because I don't hear it doesn't not make me an accessory. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Dick, we were talking about thing, biscuits. Uh, Mira just leans back in towards Savoy and like sniffs at them a little bit and just kind of to herself, like she says it out loud, but more so to herself than anything else. And she's just like, I wonder how strong the drugs are in your blood. <laughs> Savoy, Savoy and Zaheel both cackle. Like, you can pick up hints of both of them in the laugh. And Zaheel's the one that follows up because Zaheel's the one with the presence of mind right now. And is like, 
reaches an arm out and is like, you want to try? <laughs> <laughs> you want to hit? Mira, so funnily <laughs> enough, Mira looks for just a split second like she's considering it. <laughs> oh, no. It just oh, no. flashes through her eyes. But then she leans back a little bit, uh, and she she looks around the room at like the thirty other people in here, uh, <laughs> and she just kind of laughs a little bit. And it's one of those really like um, high tinkly kind of laughs, like it's it's a genuine laugh. Uh, and she looks back to Zahil uh, and says, mm, "As tempting as it is, maybe next time." <laughs> and Zahil just repeats back maybe next time <laughs> Naomi is kind of uncomfortable with this exchange because after all we're talking about <laughs> drinking someone's blood and it may be being vaguely sexual she's not sure what's going on and so she's like um to hmm. make everything better Mira just looks at Naomi, sees her, like, general mood, and just winks. <laughs> Poor Naomi. Naomi steps that much closer to Dick. Just a little bit. <laughs> just a little. And going back to being... It just a puts good an arm around fairy, Naomi's shoulder. <laughs> going back to being a good fairy girlfriend, she goes back to Jonas. <laughs> All right. So, Naomi's like... <clears throat> Anyways, this note. Oh, right. Yes. Uh, the invitation. Sorry, got sidetracked for a second there. Um, yeah, so this... Uh, Faith is like, I'll say. <laughs> Mira, like, snaps her teeth at Faith a little bit. Uh, it's, not, it's not very menacing. It's just a, like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> hey, Faith, Faith does something similar, like... <laughs> like, and he's like, wait, no, wait, no, wait, wait. Is, uh, no. <laughs> is Faith within our arms reach of Dick? Uh, I mean, the room is not giant. You could probably grab him. Maybe it's on the other side of Savoy's uh, bed. So just like reach over and bear hug him or whatever. <laughs> is Faith wearing a hat at all? No, <laughs> he's goth. Okay. He's not milady. Then... <laughs> Maleggy. Maleg. Men can't wear hats? No, he's emo goth. <laughs> Shut up. He's bringing emo back. Shut up. He's got oh, the. You heard it here first. Apparently, emos don't wear hats. <laughs> emos don't wear hats. <laughs> Add it to the list. Ladies don't wear pants. <laughs> Great ladies don't wear pants. <laughs> he's too obsessed over his hair. To really care about her hat. Oh, okay, perfect. Uh, Dick's gonna reach over and muss his hair up then. He's like, ah! Hey, hey! Do you know how much uh, pomade I'd have? I had to fucking. Uh... When when Faith Dick's says like, pomade, you know how much like... I just don't care. Wait, sorry, Faith. What? I said when when Faith mentions how much pomade, Mira just cackles. He just like scowls there in the corner and fixes his his uh, dyed black hair, and yeah, uh, Naomi's like, note, please, before we get more sidetracked. Right, uh, yeah. So the goblin came bearing this smaller fairy. No, no, the... I, I we we went over that part. Yes, I'm reiterating. So uh, the small fairy. Mira is just like, shh. <laughs> My goodness. And she looks at Jonas and she's like, these people never shut up, do they? Jonas just like looks at her just very seriously and then all of a sudden screams, one, two, three, surprise! And he like opens the letter. <laughs> <laughs> so it glows. This This note glows with this like, golden writing that like glows off the page it's like one of those like rip fantasy video games where uh you know you see this gold text appear on the page um and 
uh, it says, dear, and then you see whoever is looking at the note, it puts your name in as you look at it. So, although, say, Jonas is the one looking at it, it'll say, dear Jonas. If uh, someone else looks over his shoulder, it will say their name. Love Either that. way, it's all of the ones in your group that it that sees your names on this invitation. It's like, you and your friends are cordially invited to the fox's wedding. A grand a quick question. Thing. Okay, we're getting a lot of air. Oh. Um, does it sound or not sound? Sorry. Me out there. Um, does it say dick? Or does it say something else? It probably says primrose. Because okay. it's like psychic paper, right? How? It's psychic paper? Sort of. Yeah. If it's if it's psychic paper, then Dick's gonna think something else than her real name. Okay, sure. And it's gonna say dear butt face. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And Dick's gonna get the biggest kick out of it. So no, Dick, you you it. What you do is you look at it, and it says your real name initially, and then you figure out it's game, and you think something else. Like, no, my name is Buttface. That's not my name. My name is Buttface, and it changes before your eyes. Okay. The only problem I have with it saying her real name is that she's gone through great lengths to make sure that nobody knows her real first name. Okay, so she wouldn't think that initially as her name yeah okay so it could be dick okay and then yeah then she'll think about face okay um yeah like specifically she doesn't want anybody to know her first name because she knows the danger of that. nobody yeah nobody would know no one else is seeing it but you so regardless um it says you're cordially invited, invited to the fox's wedding. The uh, wedding between the the fox king and and his new bride. Um, this will be held at Temriu's uh, castle in approximately a week and two days, three hours and five minutes. And it's keeps counting down as you look at it. That sounds pretty dead on to me. <laughs> and it says underneath it, give or take a, a few minutes for uh, latecomers. There's always latecomers. <laughs> um, so uh, they, it, it goes on and says uh, you are expected to bring gifts befitting the occasion and to be to wear uh, your best. It will be a masked event. Uh, but if you do not have masks, uh, masks can be provided you as a gift. For your presence. Uh, this will be one of your final challenges in our master's game. And we hope to see you there. And that's it. Savoy is going to laugh mm. about something about masks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And shout something about Mardi Gras. Now he's like, I can't wait for her to be back. Face like, I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying this. <laughs> So, what are your thoughts, reactions? Uh, 
uh, the heel's going to take control at this point. And so, like, the feathers pepper their cheekbones and their eyes turn that vibrant, toxic yellow color. Um, and they kind of, like, shift into a different position. And, and they appear much more active and much more, like, aware of what's going on than Savoy was. And they say that this sounds an awful lot like a trap. But so does everything else we've encountered. Naomi sighs and says, probably. <laughs> then well, she kind of pales a little and is like, does this mean I have to wear a dress? Well, of course, my dear. And Savoy, like, tilts their head and hand towards her and is like, I'm sure that in everything that we have at the house, we could find you a gown most fitting of the detective. <laughs> and they kind of like roll back and purr and cackle at the same time in that weird bird way. Don't listen to Faith. that. Faith's like, hold on. Faith's like, no, this is interesting. So apparently being on drugs makes them kind of both do some shit to each other and be one. Anyway, so I'm gonna have to keep this in mind. This is kind of kind of funny. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, with the dresses and shit like that. Wait, do you want to wear so a dress, Faith? No, and, God. Like, the grin stretches across. <laughs> um, the heel's face. <laughs> Dear God, no. I, re I remember that one time that you, the heel, tried to get me to wear that fucking maid's outfit. I don't work for you. I work for Savoy. <laughs> Dick just bursts out laughing at that. And Adam says, hmm. Yeah, I ain't gonna wear a dress, but, um... Uh, Let's say look trap or not, we gotta go, so... <laughs> yeah, cause, can you say it again, Vanessa? <laughs> Let's say le bon temps roule. <laughs> what? That's what Dick says, which means let the good times roll. <laughs> oh. But I can't <laughs> Lisa Loeb, speak. yes, that are Even... downtown LA. <laughs> yep. I can't even do like Cajun French. My my mouth just does not pronunciate the words right. So, Dick says what Vanessa just said. <laughs> Perfect. So the heel steeples their somewhat clawed fingers together and sets their chin on their hand, and it says that the house is completely equipped um, with the family's old relics to ensure that everybody has an outfit that they would prefer for the ball. Savoy also has a tailor that can come and ensure that it all fits. Ah, uh, another one of your uh, staff. Interesting. Well, the that. tailor is commission only. They don't work in the house. But either way, I'm getting the feeling it's going to be someone unique. It always is. Right. And Faith's like, yeah, no shit. Did I tell <laughs> you about how the time I saw, like, literally uh, uh, Joff, like, floating off the floor. That was fucking weird. Wait, and the heel is like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of like, I, I don't know. And the heel tilts their head and says, how fascinating! <laughs> right. It, it, was, it was something. I'm like, either, you know, Finally, in 2040, hoverboards exist, or which 
damn, you know, I wanted those all growing up. And they said, by 2040, we'll have, yeah, suck my nut. (laughs) (laughs) We can't hear you, Riley. (laughs) Faith is the one that just said that, right? Dick uh, just looks at Faith and goes, I think it'd make us both quite uncomfortable if we did that. You know, it's a, it's a figure in sleep of sleech. It's a figure of speech, asswipe. No, wait, wrong side. Dick just looks at Faith and smiles. And it's that smile that says, uh, I'm going to hurt you. <laughs> and just goes, I just thought of two dozen ways I could kill you right now with my pinky. Um, you know, I was about to say I look forward to it, but I think that's a bad idea. Hmm. First smart thing you've said today. So, <laughs> the heel is going to slow, like, momentarily lose control as Savoy comes back, feathers receding and eyes returning to normal, and Savoy, despite the fog of morphine, reminds them all things aside, we better look our damn prettiest, but also maybe we can bring weapons. You think I could fit a shotgun in a suit coat? And like they melt oh, yeah. back and it's the heel back in control of being like eyes rolling in their face, <laughs> like eyes rolling back. It's <laughs> just being like, God pathetic human <laughs> if they need help figuring that out I know how to do it uh, perfect Naomi's <laughs> what's, the, what's the Naomi's reaction to all of this Naomi's just like okay listen I don't know very much about fairy rules yet but in general I think about like say governor's ball a navy ball a uh one of those fancy you know banquets and things like that they aren't going to take kindly to weapons being brought to something like that the heel's going to make eye contact with mira and then look at neo naomi and open their palm and just like flex the fact that they have claws and be like some of us are already equipped you can disregard Uh, Savoy's desire to bring shotguns to a wedding ironic what a human (laughs) thing (laughs) Dick just pulls out their uh, federal firearm license (laughs) it goes I can take a firearm anywhere with this Naomi actually actually is like you do I don't think that applies to fairies well no it wouldn't apply to fairies I'm just saying worried about official stuff well no but I'm not meaning literally like official events but I think the same idea applies If we're going to a fairy party, a big fancy ball of royalty or anything like that, if you're bringing weapons, either one, make sure it's well, well hidden so you don't offend anyone or anything or cause unnecessary problems or not or rely on something else aside from weapons and this is me a federal agent saying that but i i don't know the idea of bringing a weapon to a wedding uh that we are invited guests to sounds Hmm. well i'll tell you what you ever heard of a shotgun wedding 
that, so boy's that... bringing the shotgun and bet and betty's my plus one i and duke taps the holster underneath your vest Ziggio is going to roll their See, eyes again problem solved um and look at mira and be like my darling spooky kitten <laughs> Yeah, me. Why? I believe, what? I, I believe that you perhaps may have the most experience with fancy fairy shindigs. Me having experience with fancy fairy shindigs. The only fancy no, fairy to shindig. No, Mira, not me. Oh no, this is actually Faith speaking. Not everything's about you, Faith. Because spooky kitten, I would think, because he's the oh, spooky no. prince. No, Spooky Kitten is what um, Zaheel calls Mira. Oh. <laughs> uh... Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry. Mira... <laughs> um, Mira drops the glamour enough to flash her, her sharp teeth. Uh, and she just says, um, like, you know, I didn't expect that I would ever say these words, but I do agree with the human agent. Uh, the fairies probably won't take very kindly to you bringing human weapons to a fairy wedding, but you could always bring charms and offensive magic weapons. Hmm. Tastes like I can make charms. Charms would work. Sure, Perhaps. like uh, anti-glamour charms, probably a good idea. Uh, maybe. Don't know how well I'll do it because, look, I'm a witch. I'm no fairy expert. Maybe we can talk to Tilda or something, but. Perhaps between the two of you or your mother and the two of you, we might be able to have the protections necessary to get through this, Zagil says. And I hate to sound like the party pooper, like the responsible adult, but we should walk with caution because the prince will be out to get us. It doesn't matter what we do or how we appear or show up. Anything that we that could go wrong will go wrong. Nobody's like, ah. Uh, I mean, yes. From my understanding, the a lot of what happened with the mimics, though, was more our our fault. I think I can say mutually are as opposed to pointing fingers uh, for it going so badly. But the mimic isn't the only thing that has gone so badly. That's... Mira up then at that time as well and she looks over at Naomi and she's like, I can't believe I'm doing this again but the human agent seems to have a point. You guys are forgetting that at this point in the game we're probably not expecting a full-on malicious onslaught. Everything up to this point has been a sort of call and response, I guess you could say, a cat and mouse game. So anything that's been thrown at us, there has been a way around it to deal with it and that wholly depends on us. So I strongly believe that while caution is a good idea, going into this, we have to play the game like a game it's it's more of a you know a puzzle than anything else if if we're going to go into this then you have to be of the mindset that you know we're, we're trying to put puzzle pieces together this isn't an arm for war kind of situation it hasn't been that way up until this point and i highly doubt the prince is going to change his game now thank you that's exactly what i was trying to say you said it way better than i did <laughs> Huh. The heel snorts, but is like, fine. I suppose you're right. 
<laughs> Mira just like raises her chin slightly. And she's like, of course I am. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi, Naomi pauses and says, actually, on that note, it does seem like part of the game is that there is both a peaceful solution and a not so peaceful solution. Um, and yes, like what Mira said, it's all up to us. So we can guarantee that certainly shenanigans will happen. Probably someone will try to antagonize us. Like in the case of uh, Mira, Steve, is that what that was? Um, right. There will be extra pieces that we don't necessarily see. And hmm, I'll have to review my notes further to know the details. But uh, it seems that it always seems to be connected to one of us or someone that we know. That first one. I, I don't know too much about the, the circumstance with the uh, ogre, but uh, I, I I suppose Kyle was the one who was kind of focused upon at that point. Um, then it was obviously the Moonstones, and this last time it was me. So perhaps someone else that you know may have a role to play. Perhaps it's uh, Geoff or Barney or Lily or uh, I don't know for certain. Perhaps it's just a shot in the dark and more just me being paranoid. I, I, hmm. Am I making any sense? <laughs> gives that like deep chest growl and is like well I suppose a pattern would make sense um and to be prepared for that seems important Mira looks How at Steel and it's like she like tuts her tongue and she's like, why such a begrudging tone? Just because your brain isn't capable of thinking of puzzles first doesn't mean the rest of ours are the same. The heel snaps their jaws like a bear trap at her. And is like, just because I do not believe the prince will follow the same pattern doesn't mean that it couldn't be true. And it makes me no less clever to believe otherwise. Mira, like, puts her arms around Jonas's waist and, like, cuddles into him like she's scared. And she goes, Jonas, the bird is being mean to me. <laughs> uh, okay. If I yell, you guys can maybe hear me. Jonas, Jonas is going to, like, yes. smile. And then he's going to be like, but the bird has a point. Mira <laughs> hisses under her breath. <laughs> Zaheel just smiles and like red like nestles back into the cushions of the bed. Mira <laughs> drops her arms from around Jonas like he's burned her, and she like snaps her teeth at Zaheel again. <laughs> Jonas will like <laughs> grab Mira by the waist and like pull her back into him. She like smacks at his hands, but ultimately just leaves him be. <laughs> so while this is all happening, who's the one holding the note? Jonas still? Yup. Suddenly, blue fire, oh, like a no. blue greenish <laughs> fire, just like crackles at the edges and it burns up in your hands. Does it hurt? Good question. Why don't we roll uh, us cool? Let's roll cool. Uh, so second question. 
uh, because Jonas has his arms wrapped around Mira. <laughs> Does it Does... also hurt her? Rumble! Actually, with Jonas's cool roll, since he succeeded, it does not. Okay. <laughs> and Thanks. Jonas, you're able to go, ah! And kind of let go, just as it, like, sizzles up in the air with the pretty fox fire. Um, so, with that, I'm actually gonna say, uh unless there's anything else major that you want to do. Um, that is this session. Oh, fantastic. Next time we are going to head to the Fox's wedding. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's do our outros here. Uh, ahead, Rob. All right. Well, uh, I am Rowan North. Uh, I'm a freelance illustrator and our educator. Um, and you can find me next week here at uh, same time to continue the tick file files. Uh, my favorite part this time was... Um, hmm. After, I, I don't know. Just, the, just all the silly, silly moments. Uh, I enjoyed the, the Jonas and Mira, like Jonas inexplicably having a cowboy hat and being shirtless. Like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want to know what happens in that household. I don't want to know. Um, I really, I really enjoyed the half the time. <laughs> These um, weird human things that are happening, she doesn't know. <laughs> I really did enjoy playing Timison. And kind of getting that ball rolling. Uh, that was fun. It's like, whoops, we accidentally have a new, uh, oh, you know, NPC to kind of join our our intrepid heroes. Uh, so yes, that's that was very fun. Um, yeah. Next up, uh, Vanessa, <laughs> do you want to say where you're gonna be next? What your favorite part is? All that. Shenan jazz shenana jazz shenana jazz sure let's do 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 um yeah my oh. favorite part um was definitely also the the silly stuff i think now that we're all kind of just horsing around and filling out that space with more character interactions that's it's really fun to do um and i especially love uh now that mira and zaheel aren't trying to kill each other all the time uh, they can actually have some of that like banter, which is really fun. Um, and of course, Jonas is going to get his ass whooped for doing that in front of all those people. Uh, and not a good kind of ass whooping, not the kind with the cowboy hat, the kind where you might end up in the hospital, bud. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I just, I don't know. I just love all the, the little in-between bits. So that's pretty great um as for where you can find me next uh what's today wednesday my god i i don't know how the week mm -hmm. works anymore uh i don't either <laughs> you can catch me uh saturday saturday evening for animus absentus where i play annie um a spunky pink-haired lady who can hack into systems and steal information so that's pretty cool uh and then other than that you can find me at my art twitter which i will pop into the chat um and as well as my coffee page uh and if you're looking to get any characters drawn i can certainly do that for you because i'm you know getting more into the swing of my digital art so that's been pretty good awesome. fabulous thank you so much um for that uh next uh yaz uh, my favorite part also would have to just be the ridiculous amount of silly that this episode was. Um, I enjoyed playing Doped Up Savoy. Uh, <laughs> um, but I also love getting a peek behind the curtain into Mira and Jonas. And, because I just, I love them so much. <laughs> Uh, my I will be here uh, maybe next Wednesday. 
we'll have to actually see um for next kickball and um you can find my artwork on twitter or on my website um mistheart.shop and i will put that in the chat beautiful thank you so much uh next is uh riley so i am going to say again and agree with everybody else my favorite part was just the silliness of this episode just yeah just all the shenanigans i think (laughs) and like seeing how since mira is happier and getting along with people more and all of that how jonas is able to kind of relax a little bit more in group settings and just kind of mess around with her like even though he's gonna he's gonna get his ass whooped later he was still able to (laughs) disagree with mira in public at a price (laughs) (laughs) and then um yeah you can find me next here next wednesday awesome thank you so much uh and last but not least is you raven to take us away yeah my favorite part um uh, yeah echoing what everybody else said there was a lot of silly but it was also a lot of like it was silly and and also story progressing at the same time which was nice to see that combination of things um it was also fun getting to um uh show off a little bit more of of dick's connections and uh chaotic goodness rather than lawful goodness <laughs> um her uh moral ambiguity when it comes to the law in certain applications um so that was kind of fun uh yeah and you can find me next i'll be producing uh where things go south uh, Friday at 1 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, and then we've got a one-shot happening Friday night. That's 7 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, run by um, at a cat named Schrodinger um, on Twitter. And it's going to be based on uh, or referencing the Stonewall Riots. Um, so it should be pretty interesting. I don't know a whole lot about the system or, or how it's all going to work. Um, but I'm excited to see what Kat comes up with. Um, and we are still looking for players for that, so if that's something that you'd be interested in, shoot me a DM on Twitter, uh, which is uh, just right here at the Raven, or on Discord, which I'll throw in the chat here. Uh, Discord. And, uh, and yeah, we'll get you in. We've, we've got, uh, I think, four or five open spots still. Um, so it's it's... It's not filled up yet, so there's definitely time to hop in on that. Um, so yeah, that's that. We're going to go on a raid. We're going to go raid the Onyx Path. Um, they are a tabletop publishing company. Um, and uh, they did. Uh, they came from beneath the sea. Uh, oh, wait. I think they're all waving by. Just checking to make sure that they're still on. Are they leaving? They might be leaving. Hey, but Polish Crypto just just started up. All right, we're gonna go read Polish, <laughs> uh, who was the DM for Friday nights. Um, because unfortunately, uh, Onyx Path was just signing off. Uh, but Polish just started screen started streaming, so definitely give them a follow. Uh, if you're not doing so already, check out that stream. Um, she'll be DMing over here, and she does a lot of other really cool stuff. Um, So yeah, we're going to go raid, and I will see you all on Friday. Bye, everybody.